Hey everybody, it's Karen from Waterfall Acrylics. Welcome to Adventures in Paint Pouring. Uh, in today's class, <laughs> we're gonna do the Shelly Arts style and do a couple blooms and make ourselves a little purse box. Fun, fun, fun. Um, and I will be sharing all the products and everything I use to make those. This will be the one and only time where I do actual blooms because blooms aren't my bag. Did you get that? That's a really bad joke. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, blooms are my bag and I prefer the uh, abstract. So we'll do this today and then next video we're going to play with what other techniques can we use this pouring medium for? Can you do a tree ring pour with it? Can you do maybe um, a floating cup? Interesting. Don't know. I do know you can do flip cups and maybe I'll show you how I do that. It's basically like all in a cup. <laughs> Echoing so fast. So, uh, last video was the preview video for the, the live auction this Sunday, just in a couple days at 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Hope you can join me here. You gotta have an active YouTube account to participate though. And then, the video before that, we did an experiment to see how to get rid of the caterpillars, which is the, the string of cells that are connected and usually look like male body parts. And, uh, I find them undesirable. Some people like them, personal preference. But if you don't want them, um, mix your paint. Give your paint a good stir right before you do whatever technique you're gonna do. I had a habit of letting my paint sit, stirring and letting it sit, and what happens? It rises. So to me, it doesn't matter if your consistency is thick or thin, because ultimately, when it cures, what happens? the oil rises. So of course it's gonna rise in your cup. Like, duh, I'm like, why didn't I think of that sooner? Anyway, uh, yeah, here's, I ended up doing one of them. I don't know if it was the first or second one. I think it was the first one. I just didn't like how the colors came out, the color combination. So I scraped it off camera and just made another layer and did another one. And it was this guy here. And I am much, much happier with this. These haven't been cleaned or anything yet. But there's the first one. It's very shimmery with the gold, very pretty. And then here's the second one, and it has a lot more gray. Now my husband, he's like all gaga over it. And I'm like, mm, just not my, not my, not my preference, right? Um, but there's all the little gray cells everywhere. No caterpillars anywhere. Um, I just, I, these colors just aren't my bag. So again, bag. <laughs> Anyway, um, there's a mess on my counter because I've done three pours already and I didn't film it because they're commissions and uh, there are commissions are nerve wracking enough without having to film it. So I tend not to film those. So I do have a mess on my counter I can apologize for. Products I use. So ultimately the deal is the pouring medium is untinted house paint. Like, you know when you go to Home Depot or Lowe's and you go and you pick your little chip of color and you're gonna do your kid's room or do your living room and you take your chip up and you buy a little can, that little can is usually deep base, untinted paint and then a guy like matches it up and puts in the color and gives it a shake and hands it to you. That's the pouring medium. It's that untinted paint. That's the, the basis for all of this. Um, you do want to buy cans and lately I've been grooving on the Glidden Premium and you want it to say base three. This is the stuff and some of them, it'll have a little thing, must be tinted. So that's your clue like, oh, you wanna put color in this, right? Don't buy flat, get semi-gloss or satin. Those are the colors, um, those are the types you want. There's a wide variety of brands that people have been trying. This has been working for me. So I have this and base three and then your your puddle or your pillow i have been using oh, i have a gallon of it <laughs> the same brand the same thing and semi-gloss white and you'll notice it says pure white and it says base one which means you don't add anything to it this is your pillow this is your puddle that goes down on your canvas With that all said let me get you down i'll show you how i mix so excuse the mess, but here's my colors. 
I take, I take um, that base, and I have it used to measure it, now I just eyeball it. And I fill it in, this is about a half a cup, so four ounces, four ounces of the house paint, and to this I add two ounces of varnish. Now I have tried the Liquitex varnish, um, it didn't work quite so well, so I did go online and order the Chroma Josana Gloss Varnish. I find that this stuff just works the best. Um, this gloss varnish, you can get it from Blix, Jerry's, Artorama. Amazon had it, now they're back ordered, but this stuff works great. And four ounces of the base three untinted paint with two ounces of the gloss varnish. You give it a mix, no silicone, no torching. This is it. That's your pouring medium. Um, am I out of a color? Should I make another color? I'll make a color just to show you guys. So here's my little cup. You need very, very little to make blooms. So I'm just gonna put in here. Wait, am I on camera? What might help if I'm on the, on the uh, in frame? So I take this, maybe a half an ounce. Now you can use two paint, you can use high flow, you can use fluid, soft body, heavy body, you would have to add a little water. I have been using the fluid acrylic, but since I think most people have two paint, I'm gonna go, I had some color shift folk art here that I made in my last painting. That's what this green is right here. I'm gonna go and grab another two paint real quick. I should have grabbed one, hold on one sec. Okay, sorry about that. I like literally got over to my paint cart and then I couldn't make up my mind. So I just grabbed, this is Sinley Acrylics. This is heavy body. This is cobalt turquoise. So it's uh, kind of in between this green and my magne magnese blue. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this two paint in here. Plop some in, that seems like a lot. Go ahead, get in there. That's plenty. And we're gonna give this a stir. And of course, I forgot a stick. I grabbed an extra one just in case. And we're just gonna stir this in with the pouring medium. And even though it looks white, it's actually in the can has like this bluish tint to it. And you can keep it, like I just put it in a container with a lid and you can store it. And it seems to actually get better with age. It gets better over a day or two. So right now this is kind of gloopy. So obviously I want my consistency to be more like this with the, uh, like that. So it leaves a trace for about a half a second. Hopefully you can see that before it disappears. Now that's the folk art. Here it is with the fluid acrylic. Oh no, wrong one. <laughs> here, here we try the gold, because the gold is fluid acrylic. It's the same, so I don't really mess with the consistency of that, that untinted paint. I leave it be. The only time I mess with it and add a little bit of water is when I'm using the house paint, because the house paint, you know, this is heavy body, so it's definitely thicker. So I'm gonna add a, just a little bit of water to this like maybe five, six drops, and give that a good mix. I got lots of greens going on here. Until we get it pretty much like that, so it's the same. And that's all the color I need for what I'm gonna do. So I mixed up a bunch of colors with my pouring medium, and my colors ready to go. I have a cup of my, um, 
house paint sitting here ready to go and the cell activator you can basically use any color I am using today is my cell activator um, in previous attempts I had been using Amsterdam titanium white and today I am using uh, Artist Law Professional Series Carbon Black. Now this is separate from the rest of your mixes. So my Carbon Black, I added about an ounce of paint and three to one ratio of Floetrol, the American Floetrol, um, to this. So it's quite runny and then you just give that a mix and that's it. Except if it's the American version of Floetrol, go ahead and grab some Minwax pre-stained wood conditioner, since I'm always working with wood anyway, I had this on hand, and I add like two or three drops to the Carbon Black in the Floetrol, and I give that a good mix, and that's it. If you have the Australian version of Floetrol, which has the extra ingredient that the Minwax has, the Australian Floetrol looks like this, then you don't need the Minwax, because this will have the same magic ingredients that this has. But I used regular Floetrol today and my black is already mixed. And so I'm just gonna make me a little box. So my boxes, they get double taped. And I the tape I use, this is actually, I know it's blue, but this is heavy duty Frogs tape. I got it at a paint store, like a proper paint store at Sherwin-Williams. And it's very, very thick and I do two layers. That's how I'm able to get my crisp lines and nothing seeping through. I take off all the hardware. The handles are glued on, so they have to stay on. And I give it a good wrap. You want to tape underneath too, because if you put it on a little stand or something the way I am, and you happen to have paint on it, it'll keep it clean. I'm just probably, this looks like it's too low for my little cookie cutter. So I'm just gonna put it on one of my little measuring cups like this. So, I was checking myself before to see if I had paint in my hair. I'm gonna take my, this is straight white paint, um, the base one, right out of the uh, can. I just put some in a cup because I have a gallon of it. I'm gonna make myself a puddle. I'm gonna throw some white on my edges because this is such a weird shaped box. Something like that. I just take some and smear it around. Now I try to leave it cushy in the middle where I'm gonna put my colors and it can be thinner on the ends. So something like that. But let me think about it now. So I have one in the middle. Now, composition wise, I think they look better when you just don't have a big old flower in the middle of something. I like them falling off the edge or where you can only see parts of the petal. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add a little bit more paint right here to still have some cushion, as I like to call it, and maybe some right here as cushion. And now I just layer my colors. Um, I do have a variety of opaque and transparent colors. Transparent colors, everyone says they work better. I haven't had a problem with the opaque and the uh, cobalt turquoise that I just grabbed, this is opaque. So we're gonna start with that and you're just gonna make a little puddle on top of your puddle and I'll do them both at the same time. And I might do a third one right on the very edge over here that's most of it's gonna get blown off. Kinda of like that. That's color one. My next color I have, and I'll put these up on the screen. This is Indigo um, Anthrax. It's just Indigo. I can't read the rest of it. Um, but this is golden. This is more inky. This is their high flow fluid acrylics. And you just give a little squirt, a, a, a little bit goes a long way with the um, high flow stuff. See, I'm hardly putting anything on there. So there's the blue. Maybe we'll do some, I don't know if I want any, I was gonna do gold and 
kind of thinking I don't want it to be gold this time. Some of that shade of blue. I think I'm kind of too close. We'll see. I probably should have had one right here too. Yep, let me back up. Because they're all like too much in the corner. Let's do another one there. Just a little guy. For giggles. And then what? I'm missing the blue. This is such a pretty shade. Oh my goodness. There. And let's do the color shift green. Just a little bit there. It's all up there. Oops. It's in everywhere. A little bit there. And then the cell activator goes on top. And if you watch, it's heavier. Carbon black is um, almost as heavy as titanium white, so it wants to sink in pretty darn quick. It's like, oh, I'm going deep diving. See ya. Now, hopefully, you guys, whoa, whoa, too much black. Huh? Um, you're going to be able to see me blow because the idea is to go take the black, skim it across the colors, kind of like a sideways motion. So let me do this one on the corner and hopefully you can kind of see. I'm just gonna let the rest of that go off the corner because this is all like off center for me. It's my favorite. I'll do this one right here. I'll spin this around. And then we'll take it off this way. this guy that's just to add some color in the corner that's really not going to be a bloom obviously let me spin it around oh just get a little pop of color of cells right there something like that and then this one here same deal Ta-da! And I'm gonna let that sit before I move it around because what happens when you blow is you go into your puddle and you need the uh, paint to like collect itself back up again. I really like that composition a lot. I'm just gonna pour off like the, the little ends. Try to save this a little bit. Um, and gosh, that's gonna be a pretty box, right? Let me hold it up so you guys can see what it looks like. And we're gonna do the other one and this one can just hang out. It can just chillax while I work on the other one. So I saw I usually wait, I wait a good five minutes um, before I start tilting. Because if you don't, the part that's dead center in the middle, it won't move with the rest of the paint. It will not move. My hands are a mess. And this one's kind of low, so I think I can put it on a cookie stand. Can you guys see that right there? So again, all taped up. Tape your bottom, folks, if you make these. So there that is. Same deal. I'm just gonna spread this around. I'm not gonna do like the puddle in the middle since I'm gonna go off center. Again, personal preference. If you want to do a bloom smack dab in the middle, those are gorgeous too. Definitely check out um, Erica Yu's channel. She has been doing amazing swipes with um, her version of this recipe. 
So let's add, let's add some extra there and over here and over here. Um, that are just her, her, um, her swipes are just phenomenal. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. All right, there's coverage. Do I remember my order? I like how this one is white too because I don't like everything matchy matchy. Uh, I forgot what I put down first. Well, you can usually tell, so it looks like I put something light down. So let's go with the color shift. And we'll go here. Um, kinda, kinda maybe in the middle bottom middle this time there and one right there that looks great so we got that let's do I'm kind of glad I didn't do the gold I kind of like it without the gold this time we'll do the indigo The other one's dripping, which is good. Indigo. Indigo. We'll do the magnanese. I can never say that word. Blue. Two, three, and then maybe what else do I got? Oh, the color of the uh, the Sinley uh, Cobalt Turquoise. We'll throw some of that in the middle. There's the Cobalt Turquoise. And a little bit here. And then the black make everything go try not to do so much black see what happened on that other, I don't know if you can see it right there oh it's off off camera but that other one where I splooged too much black it looks okay but I try to be careful with the amounts I'll do a better job this time All right, number two. I'm gonna do this guy first. Can try and get up here a little bit. So if we uh, let me let me move him out of the way. I'm gonna try and get closer to you guys, so you can actually see me blow. We'll set him there. And hold on, I'm gonna wipe off my hands real quick. I'm gonna rinse them. I'm gonna see if I can fiddle with my um, my arm here to get you guys a little closer. So let me loosen this up this way and try not to get it in my hair my headband's upstairs and I'm too lazy to go get it I'll pick this up and kind of go mm. oh, I like that and you could see it all like sucking back into the middle I'm gonna go over here a little bit. Couple to run off. Like that. And then this guy, just a little bit this way. I could feel it in my hair. And I'm gonna turn this. Just 
spin it around. Pick it back up. I see, I like it with the black in the middle, I do. See how it sunk on that last one? But it comes back up when you give it a little puff. And you spin it around. Those are going to have black center. So there's this guy. Where are you guys? There's that one. We're going to put him over here on this cookie stand. He's going to relax for a minute or two. Make sure he's level. Get on there. Get in there. Why don't you want to go on the cookie stand? All right, there you go. Let's take this first one now and get rid of just a little bit of paint. I'm just going to tilt it toward this one corner a little bit just to get rid of some of that extra color. Have some of that white flow off the edges. That's good. Bring it back. I would have liked, I got a little overzealous with the one below because I would have liked a little more negative space. But here's the important part to remember. Because I let that sit for a few minutes, everything moves in unison. If you ever watched um, any of the video snippets on um, Shelly Carruthers' Instagram page, whenever she would tilt or move or, or use a dustpan or whatever, the paint always moved in unison. That is really important. If you start to tilt, and your center part where you, you know, where you start your blowing, if it's not moving, stop. Some people bang on it to get it to go. Um, I find, I just, you know, patience. Patience is everything here. I'm gonna give this a little blow, but otherwise I'm kinda, I'm kind of in love with this. I lost a little bit of my cells right off the side, which is kinda sad, so I'm gonna give that a little blow. just to put, bring some back. And then right here as well. Well, that's just blowing off colors right there. So that one's done. See all the paint I lost around the edges? Now my sides are all taped. It would be pretty um, because it holds cells so well. You could do one of these boxes and just let it run. Um, that would look pretty cool too. Or on a canvas, you know, where you don't tape your sides. My husband's home. So number two here has been sitting now. Oh my gosh, so pretty. Wow, I did a good job if I do say so myself. So here's number two. They go together, have some white space. Um, what don't I like? I don't like part of this white over here, so I'm gonna let that go off, bye-bye. Everything's moving in unison. Very, very important. Take some of that off on this side, bring it back. And then we're gonna come up to this one corner and just take a little bit off and then go back because now that other part's getting all stretched out and I don't like the way that looks. Kinda like that. Ta-da! That's it. That's how I do them. I love how abstract they look. I really do. I'm a... Definitely a big fan of that. Let me put two cookie cutters here and set this half of the purse on here. Why does it seem, let me make sure it seems level. Oh, you know why? Because there's another cookie cutter stuck to the bottom. <laughs> Hold on, let me pop that off. Come on off. Oh, well, if you're stuck there, I guess I don't have to worry about the other one. It's stuck on the bottom. So, we'll just leave it here. Again, um, I don't know why I keep forgetting my gloves. 
Let me um, wipe off my hands and I'll get you guys done for um, a closer look. But, uh, oh my gosh, love the colors. for that fast forward through that part I couldn't help it they weren't my hands were totally gross and I didn't want to touch my phone so let me pop you down get you up close on some of these there's a burst of color on that one I'm tempted to blow but I think I'm gonna leave it come on all right so here's number two up close there's this you can see the cells and everything there this corner here is amazing. And the other corner, really, that's going to be really pretty. And then here's the other one. And here's where I had too much black. But I'm going to leave that like that because I like the white. Like that. So there they be. Um, those will be dry in about a day. They won't be cured, but they'll be dry. Um, so they'll hang out for a week. They won't be ready, obviously, in time for the uh, functional art auction. So they'll go up, that box will go up on my Etsy shop um, once I decide how to sand it and uh, resin the tops and everything and put it back together and uh, put it up for sale. Super cute. Um, I hope you guys like it. I will put all the colors and the recipe and everything um, in the video with the link to my previous video um, as well. And uh, I hope to see you guys on Sunday. Take care. Bye.